What's up, Ninja Nerds? In this video today, we're going to be talking about anatomical position, regional terminology, and directional terminology. This is a very core topic to the introductory information to anatomy and physiology. Hey, if you guys like this video, it makes sense, it helps you, please support us. Hit that like button, comment down in the comment section, and please subscribe. Also, if you guys want, check out our website. We have some awesome information there. Go down in the description box below, it'll take you to our website. But without further ado, let's talk about this. First concept that we have to tackle, anatomical position. What is it? Really, it's the way Skelly's kind of standing there and looking at you right now. His head is facing forward, his, sh his feet are shoulder length apart, and his hands are like this with his palms facing forward and his thumbs pointing outward. That's really, really crucial because sometimes the exams will trick you when you actually think about this. So again, don't forget that part, very, very crucial. So we got anatomical position, easy, right? The second concept is regional terminology. We have to get used to some terms that we're gonna be seeing a lot when we go forward in future topics of anatomy and physiology as well as become a clinician. So let's talk about those. Let's focus on the axial skeleton terminology and then we'll go into the appendicular, okay? So axial skeleton, we'll start up here at the top, right? The most, we'll get used to some directional terms here uh, soon, but towards the top of the head, the most superior portion of skelly. Up here, we actually don't like to call it the head region, we call it the cephalic region. So in this cephalic region, all this portion here, we have the anterior portion, or the point towards the, fore, or the front of the actual skeleton, and then back here, the dorsal or the posterior portion, so towards the back of skelly. On the anterior ventral portion, we have some specific things that we have to know. First thing is, this right here is called the frontal region. Then these are called the orbital region. This is called the nasal region. This here, where his old gullet is, is gonna be the oral region, and the chinny chin chin is the mental region. That's the important parts for the overall cephalic portion on the anterior aspect of skelly. For the posterior aspect of skelly, or the dorsal aspect of skelly, if I were to turn him around, you know, be careful, he's a little self-conscious, but back here, we have the occipital region of skelly, okay? And again, that's gonna be on the dorsal aspect or the posterior aspect. And then on the sides here, where his ears would be, is the otic region, the otic region, okay? That covers the cephalic portion. While we're here though, in the dorsal portion, we go into the next part, we have this region here called the cervical region. The cervical region, it's both on the dorsal or posterior side and guess what? If I flip Skelly around here, let me fix Skelly up. We gotta make him look all good and purdy here. Then we have the cervical region here in the anterior or ventral portion. We've covered cephalic, anterior posterior. We covered cervical region, anterior posterior. Now we go into this portion here. This is the thoracic region. In the thoracic region, there's a couple different parts. There's the sternal region, the midline point right here of the thoracic region. Then you have this portion here. So this is usually where the breast tissue is. So we call it the mammary region. And then over here towards the armpits of Skelly is the axillary region, okay? So again, thoracic region here, we've covered that part. Sternal, mammary, and axillary. If we were gonna go in the posterior aspect though, on the dorsal aspect, again, then what would we have? We'd have the scapular region here. This is where his scapula bone is. We'd have the scapular region right here, and then we have this whole vertebral region right here. Okay, so this is where his thoracic vertebral region is. Okay, so this is the vertebral region. Now, if we were to continue to kind of keep flipping Skelly all over the place here, we covered the thoracic region, both the anterior and posterior portions. The next part that you can't really see well down here is we get into this portion. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take and give Skelly a little break here and zoom in on my big behemoth belly here. So right here is the abdominal region. Okay, this is the abdominal region. There's one particular point. It's where the little belly button is. That's called the umbilical region. So this is the abdominal region, and a part of that is the umbilical region. The last part here for Skelly is if we were to kind of like think about this, we talked about the anterior portion, which was again, the abdominal region with the umbilical region. If we were to flip Skelly over on the back on the dorsal part here, guess what this is called? This is called the lumbar region. So that's his like lower back part, okay? That's what we call the lower back, the lumbar region. Then if we were to go down, we get into the sacral region. That's like that tailbone area. 
Okay, let's flip Skelly back over. So we've covered the thoracic region. We've covered the abdominal region on both the anterior and posterior aspects. The next part is you get into the pelvic region here. And the pelvic region is you have, again, two parts of it. So for the pelvic region, which is gonna be right here, you'll have this region here, which we're gonna call the inguinal region. So right here is the inguinal region. And then here is the pubic region, okay? So this whole area here is the pelvic region. This here, inguinal. This here, pubic region, okay? And then we already covered the back part, which would be the sacral region. That would really cover the axial component of Skelly. Now, let's cover the appendicular part of Skelly. So we're gonna cover the upper limbs and then the lower limbs. For the upper limbs here, first thing is the tip of the shoulder. That's called the acromial region. This is called the acromial region right here. Then we get into the upper part of the arm, right? You get the big beefy part. This is the brachial region. That's the brachial region. On the back part of the arm, if you will, there's this region, the elbow. We don't like to call it the elbow though. We call it the olecranon region. The olecranon region, that's on both sides of Skelly. That's on the posterior aspect, okay? Then, this little part here on Skelly, this little divot here, where we kind of get ready to go from the brachial region into this forearm part, this is the anticubital region. Anticubital region, anticubital region. Then we go brachial, anticubital into the forearm. We don't call it forearm. We call this the antibrachial region. This is the antibrachial region. Then, once we've covered that, so we've covered again the arm, the forearm, we've covered the elbow, we've covered the shoulder area, the acromial region. Now we start coming into the manus, which we also call the hand region. The manus or the hand region has this part here. What's this? That's the wrist but we call that the carpal region. That's the carpal region. Now technically, if you're really being specific, on the back part of the hand here, this is called, you see these bones here, they're actually called the metacarpals, so we call this the metacarpal region. So the metacarpal region. Then, again, with the palms facing forward, what's this region here? That's the palmar region. This is the palmar region right here. Then, after that, you come into the digital region, which is digits five, four, three, two. But you know what we call this one? We call it the pollux, all right? So you have the digital region, but this digit, your thumb, is called the pollux. That covers Skelly's upper extremity of his appendicular skeleton. Now we gotta cover the regional terms for the lower limbs of his appendicular skeleton. So, when we talk about this part here, let me sit down. We're gonna start from these parts here. So we kind of talked a little bit about the pelvic region, right? This was the pelvic region with the inguinal and the pubic region. So this bone here, which is connecting to our femur, this bone here is called the coxa. So this is called the coxa region. See this whole big bone right here that's connecting to our femur? This right here, this region here is the coxal region, okay? Then we have this region here, called the femoral region. This is the femoral region, that's where the femoral bone is. Then, if we take and lift Skelly's big old leg up here, he's, he's jacked, this is the patellar region here. That's the patellar region, it's right around the knee area, right? Now, that's on the front. If I were to turn Skelly around a little bit into the back of his knee, that's called the popliteal region. That's the popliteal region there, my friends. All right, so we've covered so far the coxal region, the femoral region, the patellar, popliteal. The next aspect here is taking the front of the lower part of his leg. So this is actually called the curl region. This is the curl region. On the side here, because this is called the fibular bone here, this is the tibia. On the fibular portion, we call this the fibular region or the peroneal region. The peroneal region. And then on the back, so this was the popliteal. I just dislocated his Ellie's hip. This is the popliteal region. Back here on the calf region would be the sural region. Okay? All right, so, so far we've covered all of these points here. Let's come down to the next part, which is the pedal portion. So we're getting to the foot. 
So we're gonna bring Skelly up here. Look at that, look how much mobility he's got. Here, we get into the kind of uh, region around the ankle, right? So this is our tarsal region. This right here is our tarsal region right here, okay? This region here in the back is called the calcaneal region. This is the calcaneal region. And again, all of this is for what's called, so you know how the manus is the hand, the pedal is the foot. And for the pedal region, we've covered the tarsal region, the calcaneal region. You see what these are? It's your metatarsals. That's the metatarsal region. And this is the digital region, digits five, four, three, two, but we do not account for the first one, the big toe. Well, we don't call it the big toe, we call it the hollux. Okay, so it's called the hollux. So that would cover the regional terminology. Look, I done Jack Skelly's hip up here. There we go. Give you a little break there, Skelly. You're a little messed up now, sorry buddy. But Skelly has given us now a pretty good understanding of the regional terms that are involved with specifically the axial and the appendicular skeleton. I hope that helped. But there's one more thing that we need to know when it comes to understanding a lot of things for anatomy. Because you're gonna hear these terms used so much, so, so much, and just directional terms. I even used them a little bit during this process if you guys heard me. So a couple different terms that I wanna go over, let's talk about first, anterior, posterior, also referred to as ventral and dorsal. So anterior, ventral, synonyms, dorsal, posterior, synonyms. What does that mean? I'm gonna turn Skelly this way. And when Skelly is looking this way, right, towards me, and again, from your view here, going this way, in front of Skelly, or towards the front of Skelly, is going to be an anterior portion, or ventral. Going behind, or to the back of Skelly, is gonna be the posterior, or dorsal direction. So a simple way of explaining this is if I were to use an example, the nasal region is anterior to the occipital region. Or the occipital region is posterior to the nasal region. Okay, that's it. Let's come back, bring Skelly to the anatomical position where he's facing forward towards you. And now what we're gonna say is, let's do another term. We're gonna use the term superior and inferior. What does that mean? Superior means towards the head. So towards Skelly's head. Inferior meaning going towards Skelly's toes or its feet. So, if I were to use an example, I could do many. Skelly's frontal region is superior to his nasal region. His nasal region is superior to his oral region. His oral region is superior to his mental region. You get the point. But here's the key thing. Superior and inferior only apply to the axial skeleton. They do not apply to the appendicular skeleton. Inferior towards the feet. I could do the exact opposite. The mental region is inferior to the oral region. The oral region is inferior to the nasal region. The nasal region is inferior to the frontal region. So that's the terminology for superior and inferior. The next concept is medial and lateral. So medial and lateral refer to terms that are with re respect to the midline of Skelly. So if I go <clears throat> away from the midline, let's say here's his midline, away from the midline, is lateral. Towards the midline of Skelly is medial. Example, in this particular situation here for Skelly, if I were to use his forearm for example, right? Or his arm for example. This bone here, which is called the radius, an anatomical position, remember that anatomical position, his radius is lateral because it's away from the midline in comparison to the ulna. His polex is lateral to his fifth digit, right? So that's the concept. But then if we were to use the term medial, his ulna is medial to his radius, and his fifth digit is medial to his polex, okay? And again, you could apply that to all these aspects if I really wanted to. The otic region is lateral, if you will. It may be a little bit more kind of like posterior and lateral, so you get a little bit more complicated if you want. 
but I could kind of say, okay, my otic region may be lateral to my orbital region if you really wanted to kind of do that. But there's many different ways for that concept. So that covers lateral and medial. The next one is proximal and distal. So this applies to the appendicular skeleton, okay? Superior and inferior axial, proximal, distal to the appendicular. So proximal, meaning it's going towards the actual point of like in this case, the acromial region. You're going towards the actual, the beginning point of that actual limb. The distal is you're going down further away from the, the beginning point of that limb. For example, the acromial region is gonna be proximal to the brachial region. The brachial region is proximal to the antecubital region. The antecubital region is proximal to the antebrachial region. That's the whole concept. But then if you were to do it the other way, the carpal region is distal to the antebrachial region. The antebrachial region is distal to the median cubital region, and the median cubital region is, is actually distal to the brachial region. So that's the concept of proximal and distal. There is other terminology such as superficial and deep. There's really no specific example here, but if you were to pretend, superficial means towards the top surface. Deep meaning it's going deep into the actual body. For example, lungs should be right here. The lungs would be deep to my ribs. My ribs would be uh, superficial to my lungs. So that's an example for that particular situation. But my friends, that covers anatomical position. That covers regional terms and directional terms. I wanna give a big thanks to Skelly here for being our awesome participant here. And I thank you guys for tuning in. I hope it made sense. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, until next time.